Good afternoon. Today's Bible study is coming from the book of Revelation, chapter 22, verses 1 through 7. And it goes as follows. Then the angel showed me the river of the water of life, as clear as crystal, flowing from the throne of God and the Lamb. Down the middle of the great street of the city, on each side of the river stood the tree of life, bearing twelve crops of fruit, yielding its fruit every month. And the leaves of the tree are for the healing of the nations. No longer will there be any curse. The throne of God and the Lamb will be in the city, and his servants will serve him. They will see his face, and his name will be on their foreheads. There will be no more night. They will not need the light of a lamp or the light of the sun, for the Lord God will give them light, and they will reign forever and ever. The angel said to me, These words are trustworthy and true. The Lord, the God who inspires the prophet, sent his angel to show his servants the things that must soon take place. Look, I am coming soon. Blessed is the one who keeps the words of the prophecy written in this scroll. Amen. Now on to the lesson. In verse 1, the water that was spoken of and this water was spoken of in numerous passages. The water speaks of salvation, to salvation, and how the water that Jesus has for us is intended to quench all thirst of man's. This was in the provision that men need, man needs and that the Lord paid for and that we can receive freely with that important thing, and that's faith. And through his grace, grace and mercy, which is a gift, and heaven this flows freely, and his people will not only know this, but they will see this. It is so clear because there is no sin. These verses and many others like them show us that God has flowed out of eternity and into time to reach man, come into man, fill man, become a fountain of living water gushing up into eternal life, and even flow man all the way into and as a new Jerusalem. First of all, God flowed into the, to Jesus, and when he was on earth, God was flowing in him wherever he was. After his resurrection, God is flowing in Christ as a spirit to reach out to the ends of the earth and fill every human being. God himself is the fountain, the source. Christ the Son is the spring of this water, and the spirit is a living stream flowing all the time. Praise the Lord. The divine stream has reached us. We believed in into the Lord, the flowing triune God. And I know you don't see Trinity, but just look at how they talk to God. They always say, holy, holy, holy. They acknowledge God the Father. They acknowledge God the Son. And they acknowledge God the Holy Spirit. He is a triune God, entered into us. And now he flows as a spirit within our spirit, even in our whole being. God does everything by means of this flow. In the divine stream, there's a tree of life. And as we drink on the river of life, we are brought under God's dominion and rule. Psalm 46, 3 and 4. Though its waters roar and foam and the mountains quake with their surging, there is a river whose stream make glad the city of God, the holy place where the Most High dwells. In Ezekiel 47, 1 through 12, woo, the man brought me back to the entrance to the temple, and I saw water coming out from under the threshold of the temple toward the east, for the temple faced east. The water was coming down from under the south side of the temple, south of, south of the altar. He then brought me out through the north gate and led me around the outside of the outer gate facing east, and the water was trickling from the south side. As the man went eastward with a measuring line in his hand, he measured off a thousand cubits, and then led me through water that was ankle deep. He measured off another thousand cubits and led me through water that was knee deep. He measured off another thousand and led me through water that was up to the waist. He measured off another thousand, but now it was a river that I could not cross because the water had risen and was deep enough to swim in. 
a river that no one could cross. He asked me, Son of man, do you see this? Then he led me back to the bank of the river. When I arrived there, I saw a great number of trees on each side of the river. He said to me, The water flows toward the eastern region and goes down into the Arabah, where it enters the Dead Sea. When it empties into the sea, the salty water there becomes fresh. Swarms of living creatures will live wherever the river flows. There will be large numbers of fish because this water flows there and makes the salt water fresh. So where the river flows, everything will live. Fishermen will stand along the shore from in Jedi to in Ingolum. There will be places for spreading nets. The fish will be of many kinds, like the fish of the Mediterranean Sea. But the swamps and marshes will not become fresh. They will be left for salt. Fruit trees of all kinds will grow on both banks of the river. Their leaves will not wither nor will their fruit fail. Every month they will bear fruit because the water from the sanctuary flows to them. Their fruit will serve for food and their leaves for healing. Amen. John 4.14 4 speaks to it and says, But whoever drinks the water I give them will never thirst. Indeed, the water I give them will become in them a spring of water welling up to eternal life life. John 7 and 38, whoever believes in me, as scripture has said, rivers of living water will flow from within them. These are verses that are backing up this part of Revelation. John 4, 13 through 15, Jesus answered, everyone who drinks this water will be thirsty again, meaning it's natural water, but whoever drinks the water I give them will never thirst. Indeed, the water I give them will become in them a spring of water, welling up to eternal life. The woman said to him, Sir, give me this water so that I won't get thirsty and have to keep coming here to draw water. Revelation 22.17 The Spirit and the Bride say, Come, and let the one who hears say, Come. Let the one who is thirsty come, and let the one who wishes to take the free gift of the water of life. Come on. Verse 2. There are numerous thoughts about this verse, but in my mind, and I am speaking for myself only, we are no longer cut off from the tree of life. It will not be a forbidden thing. We won't be casted out of anywhere if we partake of it, and it is there for us. The other thing is, although we won't have to eat from it, is this is the Lord's symbol just to let us know that it really was where it really was in the first place, which was <laughs> to be obedient to God. And I will provide everything. And now the obedient can see that God is faithful. This tree is with God. It is in heaven. Man could not handle it when it was here with him. So the Lord took it back to where it was. This is why when people say, well, I, I can't find a garden of Eden, it, you won't find it. First of all, it's no longer there. The area may be, but the grace and the glory of God is no longer there. Verse 3 states that we are free of curse. This would have to be the curse of sin, and we could take this back to what was stated when Adam and Eve were removed from the garden in Genesis chapter 3, and you can read that for yourself. Verse 4, we will be able to see God's face because we will be his people and God will be with us. The beast has marked his people in the Bible and so has the Lord. Think of Passover, Exodus 12, 13. In Revelation 9, 4, it says, They were told not to harm the grass of the earth or any plant or tree, but only those people who did not have the seal of God on their foreheads. Now, remember, Satan has a mark. God has a mark. You will know God's people. Verse 5, his radiance and you will be with God for eternity. Verse 5 just speaks to the simple fact that when you are with God, you are with everything. There is no light that shines brighter than the Lord. There is nothing that is more radiant in God's glory. 
Verse 6 speaks to God's prophecy, the revelation to John the Revelator. It's true as all of his words are true, and this too all must come to be. This is just telling you what's happening in the future, what is going to happen, and you don't have a choice. Be smart, be faithful, be obedient, and realize that the true victory comes in accepting the cross and following the Lord Jesus and being like he is and doing his ways and loving on your neighbor and being kinder and having patience and suffering some and having some humility and being humble. But be like Christ, not by this, by this in your actions. Amen. Verse 7, once again, his word is true, so know that he is coming soon. And although we don't know the day or the night, we should act like he is outside the door right now. We should be acting like God is knocking on our door right now. This would bring us into a more faithful and vigilant discipleship. Just like if you go to IRS, you are good until you get audited and then you try to get everything in order in a hurry. Don't do that because when you get audited, it's done. Think of your audit with the Lord being every day. May you have a blessed day and thank you for sharing with me and letting me share with you. Amen. Amen.